thermodynamics, macro and micro systems. Questions to ponder. What is temperature? What is the difference between macro and micro analysis of a substance or a system? What are closed and isolated systems? What is internal energy? And what is thermodynamics? Temperature. What is it? It's, it's easy to understand in general terms, like it's hot or it's warm or it's cold. And we measure it with our skin uh, very quite easily. Uh, it's, it's even in children's stories. For example, when Gretel went to go find the seven dwarves and she stumbled across the three little pigs house and, and she went in and, and there were three different temperatures of plates of green eggs and ham and she said this one's too hot and this one's too cold but this one's just right and ate the green eggs and ham that were just right. Uh, so anyway it was in, in children's stories even but it's kind of hard to define temperature in physics terms. So uh, that's the challenge of this video and to understand temperature a little bit better we have to understand that there are two different system ways to look at and analyze systems. We can look at it from a macro view which is a human size view uh, uh, and we can also look at systems from a micro view and we zoom in and look at what's happening at the molecular level. We have to kind of use our imagination for that. But that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to first of all take a peek at macro systems and then we'll talk about micro systems and micro analysis. For our macro system we have a cylinder over here and in this cylinder we have a piston and that piston is uh, frictionless and but it's sealing here so none of the gas that's contained in the lower part of the cylinder can escape. So in this cylinder we have a particular type of a gas and when we weigh the cylinder without the gas and then weigh the, weigh the cylinder with the gas we get a particular gross mass or overall mass for the gas. The cylinder has a particular volume and inside the cylinder there's a pressure and a temperature. All of these things are human sized and things that we can sense uh, ourselves on our, on our scale. So that is our macro system. So for macro systems we typically talk about volume and pressure and temperature and the type of gas when we're looking at thermodynamics. Now if we peek inside of the cylinder here and we uh, sneak a peek at just a little teeny area and we expand it 10 times and we expand it 10 times more and expand it 10 times more and we keep doing this and doing this and doing this and we do that expansion somewhere around 23 times again expanding it 10 times each for 23 times or so we would get to a point where we could actually see the molecules we can't actually do this but if we could uh, this is what we believe we would see and what we would see is we'd see these molecules and they would have individual masses and they'd be flying around with particular velocities and different velocities and so they'd have mass and velocity and when they hit each other they would apply different forces and apply different impulses and that would change their momenta their momenta and of course their individual velocities would change then and their kinetic energies would change when they hit each other uh, when they hit each other uh, they could take this translational energy when they hit each other they could also be rotating uh, and translating and they could also be oscillating so they could be oscillating and rotating and translating and uh, doing all kinds of various uh, um, kinematic uh, and mechanics uh, here so on a microsystem we pretend that we can actually see what's going on with the molecules and apply kinematics and mechanics of ordinary objects at that micro at that microscopic level. So temperature is really our macro way of uh, measuring the kinetic energies of these molecules um, at the micro level. All of their oscillating, rotating, and translating, uh, the more uh, temperature there is, the greater the temperature, the more these uh, micro kinetic energy, the more microkinetic energies uh, these the gas would have. 
microscopic level is pretty tough to for us to actually uh, get in and, and do calculations. The number of molecules in in this cylinder would be so vastly immense that uh, we couldn't we couldn't uh, even fathom finding each of their velocities and so forth uh, at any instant in time. Let alone as the system uh, evolved, it would be uh, too cumbersome for even the, the most powerful computers to analyze. But macro systems do quite well for us. In our macro world, again, we uh, usually play with pressure, uh, volume, temperature, and of course the number of molecules of a particular gas. That's what N stands for, is the number of molecules. So in our cylinder, we might, for example, here change the volume by, or sorry, change the pressure rather by pressing down with our cylinder. And, and of course the, the amount of gas is going to stay the same and when we press down harder and harder changing the pressure we can see what happens to the volume or the temperature and the temperature. In another system we'll keep the molecules the same and uh, change the temperature here and when we change the temperature we can see what happens to the pressure and the volume. In another case we can uh, change the volume and uh, see what happens to pressure and temperature and finally, of course, we can change how many molecules there are and see what happens to pressure, volume, and temperature. So these are some of the ways and some of the things that we'll do with our macro systems to study uh, thermal processes. To understand, or what, what, there's going to be some common language when we talk about systems, and not just micro and, and macro systems, but uh, um, properties of systems. For example, a closed system in a closed system, there is no mass exchange between the system and environment. In other words, the number of molecules stays the same inside the cylinder here. In an isolated system, no energy is exchanged between the system and the environment. In other words, the environment is isolated and insulated from the uh, uh, system, which would be the molecules inside this cylinder. So there would be no heat going into the cylinder, and there would be no heat escaping the cylinder if we had an isolated system. And finally, internal energy, the energy within this cylinder here that's made up of all of these molecules that are oscillating and rotating and translating, all of those kinetic energies inside the cylinder with those molecules would be considered internal energy. In thermodynamics, we're going to uh, focus probably most of our attention on gases, but we will spend a little bit of time on solids and liquids, and primarily solids. Uh, for solids, there's definitely thermal conduction that we'll talk about, and we'll talk about how solids expand when they're heated or contract when they're cooled. Liquids, there's also thermal uh, conduction and also convection with liquids, um, and of course, liquids do expand and contract uh, with temperature as well. In fact, they expand and contract a lot more than solids do. Gases, uh, there's thermal convection uh, and uh, there's also uh, extreme expansion and contraction, uh, con condensation rather, and uh, uh, so because of this extreme expansion of gases when they're heated, they can do significant work. So again, a lot of our time is going to be spent on understanding gases because of their, uh, again, extreme e expansion when they're heated and that expansion and also condensation where they condense and, and reduce down. Uh, that allows us to do an awful lot of work and the gases are very useful in these thermal processes. So hopefully after that quick look, you can, uh, you know a little bit more about what temperature is. Uh, what is the difference between a macro and micro analysis of a substance or a system? What are closed and isolated systems? What is internal energy? And what is thermodynamics? Little scratches, little parting thought. So hopefully uh, this was food for thought for you on your quest for continuous improvement.